Good afternoon. Uh, Irma remains a dangerous storm. We are currently under a hurricane warning. Uh, this poses significant threat to the, the citizens of all of Jacksonville and communities. We do not want people to misunderstand, and Angie's going to talk about this in a few minutes, the impacts of what you see outside of the cone that you're seeing uh, as people are watching their weather updates. There's major risk outside of that cone and what you're seeing. Citizens can expect coastal flooding, large destructive surf, and rip currents to continue through Monday. We will likely see tropical force winds 40 plus miles per hour on Sunday with hurricane force wind gusts of 70 to 80 miles per hour along the coast. Coastal communities can expect three to four feet of storm surges with wind battering waves six to 10 feet on top of that. There is potential for heavy rainfall, begin rainfall beginning tomorrow with 10 to 15 inches expected throughout the area. There will also be an increased risk for tor tornadoes beginning Sunday afternoon. If you are in evacuation zone A or B, mobile home, manufactured home, a low-lying area, I hope you've evacuated. If you have not, we still have plenty of room in shelters. You need to finalize where you're going to be tonight. We'd like you to know where that's going to be and be there by 8 p.m. Shelters are open and available to those who need them. Less than 10% are occupied at this point. And we're asking you, whatever resources you have, uh, blankets, water, food, please bring what you have. That being said, if you don't have resources, we're gonna make sure that you're taken care of. We just want you to bring what you have so everybody has an opportunity to, uh, to be cared for. The National Guard has 250 soldiers in our area with 250 more due to arrive today and more may be mobilized should the need arise. Forecast and threats. Greatest hazard, winds. Widespread wind damage likely across the entire county. Unlike Matthew, this is a county-wide event. Monday morning through midday Monday. Oceanfront, 50 to 6 mile per hour gusts, up to 80 miles per hour. Downtown, 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts, 60 miles, gusts of 60 miles per hour. The St. John's River, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds with gusts of 75. And the west side, 40 to 50 mile per hour winds with gusts of 60 miles per hour. I want people to stop and think about what that kind of speed means. Even here on the low end of 40 miles per hour, imagine something hitting you at 40 miles an hour. And friends, this could go on for 12 hours. 12 hours of these constant wind speeds happening. Flooding is the next greatest hazard. Flash flood watches in effect, widespread 10 to 15 inches, isolated up to 20 inches, especially on the coast. Tornado and water spouts are serious and could begin as early as tomorrow. We are continuing to urge all citizens to be aware, to be prepared. Go to jacksready.com, use 630-CITY if you need any information. JTA will continue normal bus service, including bus service to shelters and with, for special needs tonight through midnight. That means if you need transportation, it ends tonight at midnight. So please plan ahead and plan accordingly so we can make sure that everybody is safe. With that, I would now like uh, to have Angie with the National Weather Service provide her expertise, all the data that's helping us make these decisions. Thank, Thank you, sir. you. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Angie Agnetti, and I'm a meteorologist with the National Weather Service office here in Jacksonville. And I have the privilege again to be deployed here to the Jacksonville Emergency Operations Center to help with Irma. Uh, so this afternoon, Irma was skirting along the northern coast of Cuba. It was a category three storm, and we still anticipate the storm to start begin more of a north, northwest track and intensify over very warm waters down near the Keys. And forecast models are trending more and more that the storm will stay the center of the storm will stay west of the Jacksonville metro area however impacts and as the mayor was really hitting hard we are still within impacts from Irma strong winds widespread across the county again not Matthew it's not going to stay just along the immediate coast we're expecting significant winds 40 to 60 miles an hour across the entire county and that magnitude of wind blowing for an extended duration of time up to 12 hours in some places will cause extensive tree 
power line and some structural damage as well as a lot of debris damage on roadways. So the wind is a big impact from the storm. Secondary impact is going to be the amount of flooding potential that we're expecting. So widespread amounts 10 to 15 inches across the county over about 24 to maybe 36 hours duration. So we are anticipating flooding problems. Secondary to that is going to be the surge values. We are underneath what's called a storm surge watch along the immediate coastline, and that's to highlight the potential of life-threatening storm surge. And that value is anything three feet or higher. The highest magnitude we're expecting along our immediate coast is up to four feet on the ocean front. Focusing now on surge in the river, in the St. Johns River, we're calling for one to three feet. And some of the more vulnerable areas of the St. Johns include Riverside, San Marco, and parts of the downtown area. Specifically, as we get around the Monday morning, early morning tide cycle, high tide, some of those more vulnerable areas in the river near downtown could see some storm surge flooding. And then finally, the mayor uh, mentioned tornado threat. We're going to be under a threat of tornadoes and outer rain bands from Irma starting as early as tomorrow during the daytime. So even before the onset of sustained tropical storm force winds, we're looking for the threat of tornadoes to spin up and outer rain bands of Irma as they start to creep up from the south. Okay, so this is still, even though we're not within the forecast cone of uncertainty, which is a very common graphic that's depicting the forecast track of the center of the storm, the storm itself is hundreds of miles wide in diameter, and it will impact North Florida, specifically Duval County. So let's take this seriously and continue to heed the advice of our emergency management officials. Sheriff. So in continuing with the, uh, the conversation about the wind, uh, let me talk about the bridges uh, briefly. So the bridges will close when we have a sustained wind on top of those bridges of 40 miles an hour. Uh, so a sustained wind, not a gust. So we will be up on the bridges monitoring that. Uh, and when that, that occurs, then we will close the bridges in both directions. And there will be law enforcement at the base of the bridge that will not allow anyone to cross. So we expect that to happen at some point in time tomorrow. And again, as Angie mentioned, probably for a 12-hour duration, uh, you will not be able to cross the high-profile bridges in town, the, the Hart, the Matthews, uh, the Dames Point, uh, the Buckman, and all the ICW bridges. So uh, again, per prepare for that, plan for that, and we'll continue to monitor the, the wind speed on, uh, on the bridges. Questions? Mr. Mayor, people are starting to make the decision now whether or not to go to a shelter. Perhaps they're going to go at the last minute in reality. Do they still have an option? Do the shelters close down? Will they be turned away if it gets too full? Uh, shelters, we have major capacity right now, less than 10% of what we've opened, and we have the ability, I think we're, uh, Director, what, about 50% open at this point? Yes, sir. So about 50% open of what we have scheduled to open and only 10% capacity. There's plenty of room. Uh, anybody in those evacuation zones, mobile homes, manufactured homes, or a place they don't feel safe, they don't have safe shelter, uh, please go to a shelter yeah, now. Sure. Where are we on fuel supply? We were 70% yesterday when we talked. Uh, where are we in terms of fuel for uh, Jacksonville? Uh, the information, I don't have the percentage right now, but the information that I'm getting back is that there, there are, there's not widespread issues at the pumps. And, and as I said the day, yesterday and the day before, the issue in Jacksonville, at least, was not a supply. It was a distribution issue, the ability to get to the pump. And, uh, and, and it seems that that has, has happened and is happening. Uh, we'd have to get back to you on that, but I would say the first thing I would say to people right now is, and we'll get you an answer on that, that's a, that's a good question, but I want people to be concerned about uh, themselves, their loved ones, and their neighbors. I mean, look, it, we went through this a year ago, and it's easy to forget. The most important things in life are the friends, the families, the relationships, the moments, and the day-to-day -day interactions that we have. We can replace all this material stuff, so let's make sure we're safe. Okay. Talking about power for a minute, um, obviously we had power outages last year, went up to six days in some areas. We're expecting impacts on the west side this time, a lot of low population density areas, older infrastructure. Um, what's being done on the front end to sort of get ready for these inevitable issues in the wooded areas and more rural areas? Yeah, the JEA has uh, indicated in our meetings that they have two times the inventory available as they did before, as normal. 
Uh, so that's poles, et cetera, to replace, and four times normal manpower. So four times ahead in terms of staging areas and uh, manpower ready to move. We've heard in Northwest Jacksonville, I don't know if any folks up there have information on the Legends Center maybe near capacity. Do you have any information? That's accurate. That is accurate. That's accurate. Also, 911 call centers. We know the city has a number for information. Can people still call 911? Will, will there be a capacity issue? Are they able to take calls? Director, 911, Chief. Chief. So, sure, at the height of the storm, you may see uh, at times when we can't answer every call. Um, you know, 6300500 is not an emergency for the sheriff's office. Uh, for us, 6300526 is not an emergency for us. Obviously, if it is, go with 911. Keep sticking with 630 City if it's just generalized as we keep uh, messaging. Uh, but sure, high call volumes when, when in the height of the storm, uh, you know, if you hit it, call back. Uh, but somebody is there. We're, we're double staffed, if you will, in, in 911 centers. The way the way this, the solution to that is if you have an issue and it's not a medical emergency, call 630 City. If it's a medical emergency, call 911. To that end, the... Uh, Baptist Beaches, uh, have, they've transferred patients in the emergency room. Mayor Latham is through 5 o'clock today, correct? Yes, yes, sir. So that emergency room will be open to patients through 5 p.m. today. Uh, other hospitals around town that are not in that evacuation zone, obviously emergency rooms are, are open. Mayor, do you anticipate a time when uh, 911 calls can no longer be answered during whatever weekend of this storm? Sheriff, Fire Chief, you want to... So we, we do anticipate at some point in time, based on storm impacts, that we pull our people back and, and wait for the worst of it to, to go by. So, uh, again, that's a minute-by-minute minute monitoring of that, uh, of that situation, uh, a very important decision for us when we do that. But it's important for people to know that that time will come uh, at some point in time here in the next you know, 48 hours that we will have to pull back and wait for winds to subside a bit so it's safe for our people to go out and provide service. So uh, you always call, always call, and, and, and we'll do our best. Obviously, again, it's a minute-by-minute minute, uh, decision that we're making here. Uh, and this is what we've been telling people since Wednesday, that this time would come. And when we talk about evacuating A and B uh, and, and going to a safe place, getting to a shelter, if that's, uh, if that's the, the decision you need to make. Um, but, again, it's, it's about getting that information out. We've been doing that since Wednesday. So uh, this is not new. If you have an emergency at any time, please call, as the fire chief said. Uh, we will have people there to answer 911 calls. Uh, w how we respond, again, is going to be a minute-by-minute -minute, uh, decision in the worst parts of the storm. We'll continue to provide service as we do every single day, right up until that point that we cannot anymore, again, because of the safety of our people. Uh, and then as soon as it is safe again, we will get right back on handling those calls for service. Mr. Mayor, or perhaps Ms. Yeti, I've seen multiple people tell me today that red line, which is the eye, keeps moving west. This is a West Florida problem because that's where the eye is. What do you think about people thinking that, that belief becoming more common? It's not a West Florida, Florida problem only. Uh, Duval County in Jacksonville is under serious threat. And I'll, Angie is the, I mean, she's the expert providing the information and the data and has made it very clear to us as set up here today by a new number of us that this is a real threat i mean you talk about these wind speeds i mean even a 40 miles an hour over to, and that's the low end over 12 year, 12 hours i mean if you just stop and think about that this is a very very dangerous storm mayor um last year you call it a hurricane matthew 100 year storm uh, we're 11 months out we've got another storm that is at least as bad um is this the future for uh, Jacksonville and planning and you know, going forward, do we need to plan for these storms and the budget in a way that we're not doing currently? Well, we're, we're prepared. Uh, we were prepared for Matthew. We're prepared for this one. And I certainly think through the next budget, budget process, we'll take into consideration that we've had uh, two years of back-to-back -back, uh, uh, major serious events. Sure, but we were, able, we were able to handle Matthew and are prepared to handle this because... Uh, <laughs> We, we put our financial house on stable ground, if you will, over the last two years because of the cooperation of the people of Jacksonville and the city council and the public safety employees. Scott yeah. Williams, looting. Is there a concern about that and how should people handle it after they see it or have concerns about their business? So we, it's always a concern. It's always part of the planning for us. And we've got, you know, virtually double the staffing on, on the street in the evenings uh, to prepare for 
you know, burglaries during evac evacuated areas, that type of thing. So anything that people see that looks out of the ordinary, please call us as always. Uh, and again, we've got the, the extra additional patrols out in the area as well. Uh, but it's again, something that we look at, you know, at every planning meeting to make sure we cover those issues. I mean, the entire county is under threat. The evacuations are made based on the information and the the highest threats available at that time. Uh, and so uh, A and B was that that was the call. We stand by that call. And um, the, but it will be a countywide event. Uh, so everybody needs to be prepared and everybody needs to be ready. All right. We will see you tomorrow, same time. And if anything happens in between, we'll update you. Thank you.